This is my huge centipede and it is one of the scariest creepy crawlers in the dark den, but she wasn't always like that. I received her as a tiny, tiny centipede baby and it took her 4 years to grow this big. As she grew, I moved her into her current enclosure, which is now definitely too small, so today we will set up and move her into her permanent house. It will be much bigger, with a lot of substrate, nice hides and even some plants to make it more cozy. And on top of that, we will give her a juicy roach to munch on. And that means that I finally won't need this huge rock that is actually blocking the, the lid so Centipede cannot open it because I'm not like 100% certain that she wouldn't be able to just lift it up and squeeze outside because they are really capable uh, escape artists. So this will be the final enclosure that we will be setting up today and I'm really hoping that there will be no way for Centipede to lift this door in order to open it. I'm pretty sure it won't be able, but I'm kinda afraid, maybe just a little bit. But now since Felix is still not down here in his open enclosure, even if Centipede escapes, she really can't go anywhere, so it is alright. And she cannot go into some other animal's enclosure, because everything is closed off. But now check out the size of the Centipede, because I'm pretty sure that she molted after the last time I show her because she definitely seems bigger and she definitely seems too big for this enclosure now and look how capable she is. Uh, let me just... Uh, just in case because I see that she is actually trying to figure out if she can actually go outside. And where are my tweezers? Look how awesome the centipede is. Oh yes, so we will, we will build an enclosure for her uh, and then we will do a time jump so we can actually feed her in her new enclosure and see how she uh, set everything up. If she dug her hide or something like that. And you see, she can easily climb out. Please, centipede, that is not what I like you to do. <laughs> okay, let's get the lid back and put the rock for now. There's actually quite a lot of work to do with the enclosure. I mean, the enclosure is done, but we need the background. And that one will be the same as the one that we did for, for Bonita, you know, the Terraposa Blondie. Uh, I have this expanding foam that I laid across the styrofoam, and now I need to carve it to make shape a bit prettier, and also in the same time that will help the layer that we are getting over that styrofoam to better adhere to the styrofoam and the uh, expanding foam. The layer that we will put on top will be once again the glue for tiles and that is the same thing that we did for Bonita. Uh, let me just show you so you can refresh your memories, you know. This is it, but as I was complaining in the video when I did that, you see I really don't like how the background is so plain and I don't feel like it is fitting with the theme of the enclosure. So therefore I will actually try a, a different thing today. By the way she destroyed both plants, the one that was over there and the one that was over there, but thankfully this one wasn't destroyed completely and you see it is now recovering and regrowing, so hopefully she won't be bothering that plant. Um, she's inside, you see. I fed her yesterday so she's just chilling. <laughs> the way this background will be different from that one after I apply the, the layer of tile glue, glue for tiles, whatever, after I apply a layer of that, I will then actually use the brush to apply a bit of paint across that, and that way hopefully the background will look better. I don't know if that will work, but I will try it out for sure. I mean, it should work. It, it definitely should work. But we will see if I will do a good job with that. Now, you have seen me do these carvings like a thousand times, so there is really no point in explaining once again what I'm doing. But just a quick time lapse. And voila, the carving is complete, and I think that it looks pretty unique, right? Yeah, now. I also mix the tile glue, you see, and now we are ready to cover the background with it. For that I'm just using the small brush and with that I just applied it like, like that, you see. This can also be one time lapse, so yeah, let's do that. Ok, 
Okay, the glue is dry and it looks like this, you see. And this is definitely something that I'm not satisfied with because it is really, really, despite having a lot of texture to it, not a texture, but the overall shape of the background is really intense. It looks really plain and flat. And that is because we have just this one same color across the whole surface. And that is the reason why it looks like that. Uh, nothing in nature is so flat. So what we will do now, I have paints here for the, this is acrylic paint for concrete. And we will use that to cover the entire background into black color. And then I will use this yellow one to like, I'm not really sure how the, the technique is called, but you will see after we apply this layer. This will be pretty quick, at least I think so. <laughs> By the way, this is the same black paint that I used inside of this huge uh, junglearium. Oh yeah, I just go and paint everything. It is a straightforward job, so nothing more to say about it. And since there is a downtime while I'm painting this, let me just remind you, in case you missed the last video, this August I will be attending an expo in Orlando, in Florida. So once again, I'm visiting the United States of America and I'm super hyped about that. I'm gonna meet there with some old faces like Tarantula Cat, Mike, Zion, and also in the same time I will meet some new faces like Tanner from Serpa Design and also who else? Yeah, Brian Barczyk, of course, he is the main organizer. And also, what is his name? Keenan Harkin. I didn't even know that his uh, surname is Harkin. Anyway, I am looking forward to meet those guys. Okay, this is done. Now time to jump so the first layer gets dry. And you see, even though as black, it looks better but that is still not it now we will use the technique and in the meantime i remember what is the name the name is i think dry brushing because what you do you take a bit of paint on the on the brush and then you dry the brush so you only get like a little bit of paint you see like that and then the magic happens oh that is too much it really needs to be dry ah that's a bit better you see now the background no longer looks that flat and it is just so much prettier than it was. You're basically just highlighting only the certain parts of the background and it just looks so, so much natural, right? You see, already looks so much better and we are still not done with it. I just go across the whole background with that. Oh <laughs> yes, just ignore this section where I applied too much paint and start. Uh, the rest of it, it looks just so much better now this also needs to dry and once it's dry we can actually start setting up the enclosure so one final no it won't be final because we will do a time jump once we set up the enclosure so she can acclimate and we will be able to feed her so this is almost a last time jump the background is done and i already took the opportunity to install it inside of this enclosure in case you're wondering the dimensions of this enclosure are 50 times, I think it's 35 times 35. Yeah, I think that's the one. And you see, oh, the background looks so, so nice. Even though I think that the better color combination would be if I used, instead of this yellow paint, if I actually used white or gray, I'm really not sure which one would fit better, but I think that uh, with white color the whole background would look even better maybe even if i have dark gray so not black dark gray with white or some other gray color i will for sure test that out in future videos but now i'm ready to set up the enclosure all needed ingredients are right here and also over there i have substrate and underneath i have the leaf litter so let's just get down to business even though i never really observed centipede to dig inside of that enclosure i still want to give her a uh, kind of deep substrate to give her that opportunity maybe with a better setup maybe then she will change her behavior we should see that in few months i even think that i will use most of the substrate mixture that i have but it doesn't matter because i have all the ingredients needed to make more one more bucket and i think that that should be enough i can move it around and in front i actually want to have 
a small amount of substrate while having a slope in the back naturally, right? Like I do in all of my enclosures, at least majority of my enclosures. I'm not really sure if I want to use this huge cork bark. I think that this is actually too big for this enclosure. What do you think? Hmm, yeah, we will try this smaller one to combine it, the cork bark together with this. To be honest, even though I really like how the, the barrier turned out, I don't think that it is going well with the actual substrate mixture that I'm using here. Yeah, I should definitely for next project use some different color scheme. Hopefully sand for the texture will fix everything. Also for laws, I really want to fit this flat rock that was on top of her enclosure as a relic, you know. I think that it will be nice. That will go here in front. Okay, <laughs> let's add the plants and then leaf litter and hope for the best. Okay, okay, I think that we are kind of improving, right? Yeah, now with sand for the texture and leaf litter, it will be a different story. I put a little bit around the hide and also on the rock, over there, over here, basically everywhere. And now the good stuff. You see, this is not just the leaf litter, I have some twigs inside and all sorts of nice goodies, which gives us this final result. And I really dig this. <laughs> Let's soak it and also add some springtails, you know, the cleanup crew. I'm gonna especially soak the plants. Now little buggers. Just a little bit of springtails so they can eat the nasty stuff. And with this the enclosure is done and ready for the centipede. I think that she will enjoy it. Yeah, let's get her inside. The difference between these two enclosures is insane but to be honest when i put her inside of this glass enclosure she was much much smaller i think that i can pull out some footage from that video from a rehouse video to just show you how much smaller she is and in case you don't know i received this centipede as this big it was she was tiny and now look at her she's such a beast okay Let's get her in. To be honest, I'm really not sure what will my tactic be. I think that I will just lean the enclosure like this and try to coax the centipede inside. I think that is the best thing to do. And I think that is the safest thing to do. So, Mr. or Mrs. Centipede, how are you... Whoa. How are you doing today? Can we get... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, she's going crazy. She's going berserk. Look at that. <laughs> she just bolted. Can you hear that? Man, that sound. <laughs> she's such a beast. Oh, and look. I think that she's actually drinking. Oh, you are thirsty, huh? <laughs> Yeah, go ahead and drink. This is actually the first time for me uh, seeing a centipede drink. Ah, <laughs> great! And we are back on the move. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Red alert! Red alert! Okay. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. But I just realized that I don't have tweezers, so... Uh, let me just quickly go and grab them. I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. And we can... Oh, what are you... No. You already began to destroy the plants. You are in, not inside for even like two minutes. No, hey, 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 no. Go back, go back, go back, go back. Please go, no. Go back. Thank you. This is such a nice thing to see. <laughs> I am sure that you will enjoy this enclosure. There is a lot of place to move around so you can stretch those, those legs. <laughs> okay, no, 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 go back, please, centipede. Now we are going to let her acclimate to the actual enclosure and then once she's acclimated for a few days, we will try to feed her and check her out. And actually what I want to do, I want to set the camera through the night to record the time lapse so we can see what she will actually do in those first I don't know, like 20 or maybe 24 hours. That should be a sweet thing to see. 
and also once we are done with all of that i will reveal her name or his name i really don't know the sex it is maybe a boy or a girl doesn't matter uh, i already have name prepared but it will be revealed at the end of this video so let's just go into a strolling time lapse <laughs> And here we are for the feeding. However, Centipede is not outside. And even though she was for past two nights while I was recording the time lapse, she was out. This is the third night and she is currently not outside. So I'm not really sure how this will go. On the time lapse, it seemed like she's going underneath this wood. So I assume that maybe uh, this hole right here is where she can squeeze in. But it kind of looks small, even though on the second night's time lapse it seems that she came from this hole out. And it seemed like she went from this side inside. So I think that I will try to poke a little bit to see if we can get some reaction or something. And yeah, if that doesn't work, we will need to wait for another night. So naturally, I will try poking here. Yeah, actually, I can go underneath. And if I try to go here somewhere. Oh, something moved underneath. Maybe it was just some leaves. Oh, 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 look at this. There were some fillers right there. See? Hmm. Yeah, I can see them wiggling, but... Well, 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 should I try with roach? Yeah, I have roach right here ready. It is one male headlight cockroach, you see. So I'm gonna take him and see if maybe that will lure the centipede out. Maybe struggling roach will do the trick. Oh, come on. Nope. I'm so tempted to just leave the wood, but I don't want to mess up whatever she built underneath. So yeah, I will definitely need to do another time jump. I missed the enclosure and here we go, the centipede is actually out. So uh, scratch the time jump, we don't need that. Oh. Now does that mean that we can also feed her? I sure hope so. Thank god I was still recording because I kind of had the feeling that maybe something will happen. Once the centipede comes down, we'll just try and get the roach to move in her general direction okay oh oh yes oh oh or actually this roach escaping that is one strong roach you see oh but the centipede is stronger yeah she's deaf oh what a struggle we have a combat going on right there just for our entertainment Centipede is trying so hard to pull the roach out while roach is just trying to dig and escape. <laughs> this is crazy guys, this is crazy. Too bad we cannot really see the action because the... Oh, never mind. They are now... Ooh, they are now on the open. <laughs> Whoa, but the roach is still still struggling, you see, even though he is 
badly beaten. <laughs> I mean, that is just crazy. Centipede with such a long body and with so many legs cannot hold the roach down, you see. The roach is basically pulling the whole centipede in the direction he wants to go. We just need to wait for Venom to kick in. I don't think that I ever recorded such a dramatic feeling. Or actually one, one feeling with her was also super dramatic. The one where I fed the female headlight roach and she actually gave birth to small roaches that were still inside of her enclosure to the day uh, when I rehouse her in this video. Okay, now I think that she will be able to get a hold of roach or not. Man, this is crazy. Once again, they are going over there. See? Such a struggle. Or maybe the centipede is moving now. I'm not really sure. I think that this is now centipede moving, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. No, no, no. Go back, 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 back. <laughs> this was crazy. She's like trying to carry the roach somewhere. Maybe where there is less light or something like that. I think that you will just need to eat him right there on the spot, you know? Or you can go inside of your own hide. Oh. This is so funny to see how she's carrying the roach. Anyhow, this centipede doesn't have a name. And while thinking how to name her, I think I have uh, the best suited name. And that one will be... Drumroll, please. Her name will be Devil the Second. Yeah, as a tribute to my original centipede, the first one that I had, uh, that one was called Devil. And now we have Devil the Second, right there, right here in front of us. <laughs> and you see, she's so busy just moving around and... Yeah, once again, why does she have the need to go outside? Let me just close her enclosure because we need to turn off the lights for her to to calm down and eat the roach in peace. So, this is the end of this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I think that... Ah, yeah, just... Whatever, just ignore that. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I think that it was... The feeding was super exciting, more exciting than I initially thought. And the enclosure is nice. So just like you enjoyed this video, Devil the Second will enjoy this enclosure. Uh, if you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe. I upload every Monday, sometimes on Friday. So see you again soon. Bye!